we got a chance to kind of make fun of it and have a happy time out of it instead of um, dragging people down about how many problems we got because that was all around us. It was so much around us that that wasn't fun. You know, that wasn't no fun. Let's make fun of it. Well, all right, start, Former members of the James Brown Band came to play with Clinton, attracted by the freedom he offered. He had a love. It was a certain, not a dictating kind of uh, spirit. You know, it was more um, musician friendly. His his concepts had no boundaries. You know, uh, you couldn't say, "Well, George, you can't do that." You know, because that didn't mean anything to him. He wanted to do it anyway, and then you just had to make it work. He had that kind of uh, nerve, and he had that kind of uh, attitude where he could uh, he could do things that other people wouldn't even try. <laughs> In 1976, George Clinton devised a stage show to tour stadiums, usually frequented by the dinosaurs of rock. His central dramatic device was a spacecraft, the mothership, descending to Earth to bring funk to the world. This was a vehicle for Clinton's belief in the healing power of music. I ain't no preacher, because we don't really know what we're talking about, but it, it was as good a theory as any, and it was a positive one. It was always to make you dance and not have to do nothing, you know, really unfunky. In the show. Clinton's alter ego, Dr. Funkenstein, stepped down to give deliverance from what he saw as the insanity of a planet without funk. This alien of the universe, What's happening, this super god, you know, and he was a black dude that liked to party. Yeah, Dr. Funkenstein here. Yeah. We have come to save you from your drab, funkless life. It ain't the big of a pill, baby. Call me the big pill. It would just free your mind, you know, it freed everybody. It might have freed us too much, <laughs> but uh, it did give you a different kind of attitude. Black and Proud gave you one kind of attitude. Now here comes the, uh, the mothership to give you another kind of attitude. Wait a minute. I think I see the mothership coming in. No. But if audiences could bear to stop dancing and listen closely, there was a still deeper meaning to the mothership telling of sweet chariots, liberation, and transportation to a better world. If you look through the Bible, it has, all through the Bible, it has, um, you're gonna be enslaved by Pharaoh, and somebody's got to, a Messiah got to come and get you, or swing down sweet chariot, take us to heaven. It was a song, it was a gospel song, actually. I think I hear the mothership coming, yeah. When I hear swing down, sweet chariot, stop and let me ride, you know, my parents and people say, well, that, that goes back to the, to the slave era. And they were talking about when, you know, Martin Luther King had said he has a dream where we can all be together. This notion that, you know, at some point, black folks will be free, will be able to have self-determination, will be able to do their own thing. And so here comes George Clinton, you know, taking this sort of ageless notion of one day, you know, I'll be able to ride. You say, well, okay, well, I got a ship for your black ass, and let's get on it and ride. The mothership burned a fiery path for several glorious years. This funk opera became a funk folly. Its size and expense made it impossible to sustain showmanship of this kind. You gotta sign my list, cause I'm a manifest and bless the mic I hold you on the next. Then you gotta have so Yet as the mothership crashed to earth and George Clinton's crew began to break up, funk became the big brother to a new sound. Hip hop. You wanna get on after me? Think about it. Wait, erase your rhyme. Forget it. They kept the funk alive. And it was like um, they was the extension of 
the street music. And that's what we were doing. I drip steam like a microphone theme. Ego to MC is my thing. When hip hop artists started to make records, they looked to the first funk master for inspiration, sampling James Brown's classic grooves. You got it! James was pure dope because you could actually take his and cut a thousand records with it because you could use his foot, <clears throat> grunts and groans, no words at all. It was natural that the new godfather of hip-hop, Africa Bambata, team up with an admirer, the godfather of soul, Brown himself. He had a lot of good things, but I, I admired him because he was going the right direction. He was going to solve it, not create more chaos we had. And I love that because I'm about solving it. I ain't about creating no chaos. You're not black and bad, black and proud. The music of the 80s was connecting with the decade of James Brown's soul revolution, funk, and the message once again fusing in righteous anger. <laughs> 